So with that being said, um, let's get to the word. Um, so the title of this message this morning is called Waiting to Death. Um, again, first of all, I want to give honor to God and say, um, I do not take it lightly that I have had the opportunity to sit before you. Um, and I also want to, again, um, honor our bishop and our lady and say thank you. I love you and I um, appreciate you. And uh, I hope that this time together is an opportunity um, in which I get to make you proud. Um, also got to make sure that I send a shout out to uh, my husband of 26 years um, and counting um, as he is upstairs watching on YouTube. Um, I love you and I um, appreciate you and know that this um, could not happen without you and I could not be who I am without you. And last but not least, to my two children, uh, uh, Kalisa and Fanta, and as everyone knows, my favorite girl, um, Brooklyn Elisa Renee Diakiti. Um, um, no one uh, has a place in your heart like um, a grandchild. Um, so quickly, let's pray, and then we're going to get started. Um, Father, I thank you for this time that you have allowed me to be before your people. I do not take it lightly. I ask that you let nothing come from my mouth that is not aligned with your word, um, your will, and your way. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. Okay. Again, the title of the message is Waiting to Death. Um, um, how many of you remember a couple of months ago sitting in front of Lady Leilani, who was giving us a word about what we're saying and what we're speaking. Um, I don't know about you all, but I gave her the side eye through most of the message and thought I would probably unfollow her for a few days um, because it hit me so hard. Um, but in that moment, um, oftentimes for me, when I'm sitting in a service, um, God will often just drop something in my spirit. It A lot of times it's just a word. Um, in a way that I'm looking at a word, or it'll be a scripture, and it kind of gives me like mm, aha, an, an aha moment where I need to look into that more. So after I recovered from Lady's message, um, the word that came to me was um, wait time. Like, what are we doing in in the wait time? And I was like, hmm, okay, God, like, what does that what does that really mean? What are you what are you saying about waiting? And what was coming to me was there's this idea of there's this worldly idea of wait, and then there's this biblical um understanding of what we should be doing during the wait time. So oftentimes in our worldly view, we see wait time as a time where just we're just sitting still and doing nothing, right? Um, and we just wait, wait, wait until something hopefully happens in the end. Um, but God's intent during wait time or waiting is not for us to sit around and be passive, um, waiting for him to do all the work. Um, the biblical wait is an action word, right? A verb in which it means that we should be doing something. We're not just sitting by idly, hoping and waiting that God's going to bless us in an area, right? Um, so what we're going to start off doing is we're going to look at some definitions of waiting. Um, again, I am a product of my spiritual father, so you should know that there's going to be some words, um, some definitions, and then um, a connection to the word wait. So our dictionary de definitions of wait are as follows. To allow time to go by, especially while staying in one place without doing very much until someone comes, until something that you are kind of changes, right? I'm waiting for this. I sit and wait for that to happen. A period of waiting, pause, interval, or delay. Right. Again, 
It is the idea that we are just sitting and expecting something to happen. Our last one is a um, to stay in a place of expectation, right? That's a little different, right? I'm waiting and expecting something, something to happen, but it's really not about movement, right? Our, our dictionary worldly definitions seem to be when we're waiting, we're just, we're just in a place. So let's, and now let's go to our biblical definition. Biblical waiting is an active verb indicating that to wait is to be conscious of the things going on around you and discerning the right time for the next thing. So right away, the idea is we're waiting, but we're waiting on the, how do we move forward? We're not just sitting still. Okay. Uh, The Hebrew word for wait is, and I may say this wrong, kova, which means to bind together. So really in Hebrew, when we're waiting and we're looking at scriptures that talk about waiting on God, what it really means that we're doing is we're binding together with God to understand what the next steps are so that we can get the outcome that we want. We're not just sitting in this place so that we can just wait on God to do something. How many times have you talked to a person and they'll say, and you ask them how they're doing? Oh, I'm just, I'm just waiting on the Lord. You know, I'm, I'm waiting on God to bless me. Um, I'm waiting on my husband, I'm right? But the idea is, it is important to understand that we need to be doing something in the wait time, right? Because when we're not doing in the wait time, we inhibit God to do what our expectations are of him. And our last um, biblical definition of wait is, it is biblical waiting is a pro- active stance of abiding in him, right? So when we're waiting, again, let's go back to the Hebrew word, right? We're binding together so that we understand how to abide in God. That is that work that we need to be doing. So of course, I would never not be in front of you without scripture, right? Our first scripture that we will look at is Isaiah 40, 31, right? It says, but those that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. What I want you to continue to think about as I move through this message, let's in um, Isaiah 40, 31, where you see wait, change that to those that bind together. So when you read it like this, but those that bind together with the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. Because now your weight and to be able to get the rest of what the scripture is saying, you have to then understand your role is to bind together, to understand God, to understand the next steps so that you are able to move forward and get all that God is saying for you. Of course, um, we have another scripture, which would be Psalm thirty-seven, thirty-four. Again, the scripture reads, wait for the Lord and keep his way and he will exalt you to inherit the land. You will look on when the wicked are cut off. I want you to to think about it in the same way. Change that weight to bind together. Because when we think about it as a bind together, it means that there is an action that we must take. There is something that we must do 
in order for God for God to do his part. Right? So I be as I began to look at the scriptures and I kept contemplating weight, um, the idea was there has to be different ways that we can look at weight so that we can understand when we're not doing it in the way that God intended us to wait. And so again, being a product of our Bishop who we celebrate today, I thought about this idea. You know, we often hear people say, you know, I'm waiting on a word, I'm waiting on a prophecy, I'm waiting on the hookup, I'm waiting for my spouse, you know, I'm waiting for God to give me this new job. But the question is, what are you doing in the wait time? You have to continue to ask yourself, what am I doing in this wait time? Because often when we sit idly in the wait time and we're not binding to God, we're not binding to his word, we're not binding to what his expectations are, we then blame God when we don't get what it is that we were hoping for at the end. So I have come up with two um, acronyms for wait. The first one, wait. Our first W is wasting away opportunity. Our A is avoiding preparation. Our I is ignoring the process during, and our T is the transition. Wasting away opportunity, avoiding preparation, and ignoring the process during the transition. When we get to both Um, understandings of weight, you'll see the T doesn't change because our goal is always to transition into what it is we want God to bless us with, right? But it's what we're doing in the W, A, and the I, which will determine whether we get into the T. Because I know that there have been moments in my life where I have sat and said, well, I'm just waiting on God. You know, I, I, you know, I, I find a scripture in some ways that fits what I want, but oftentimes I'm misunderstanding that scripture because I want it to fit how I feel and what I want rather than taking the time to understand and bind together with God to understand what I should be doing in the wait time. So we're going to go, I'm, I'm going to go back to that question again, which is what are you doing in your wait time? What are you doing in your wait time? If we go back to the Hebrew term, kava, let's not forget that it means to bind together. And what we're binding together is we are binding together with the Lord so that we understand what the requirements are in the wait time. God did not intend for our wait time to be unproductive, but rather a time for growth and preparation. I'm gonna say that one time. God did not intend for our wait time to be unproductive, but rather a time for growth and preparation. Believers will often get angry at God because they waited, but never received the thing that they were waiting for. Oftentimes, God cannot move because we are moving. I, you know, I often, as I was working through this and 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 teaching about the. Uh, thinking about this, I picture God when people say, well, I'm just waiting on the Lord. And I picture him looking like, I'm waiting on you. You're not, I can't do what I need to do. If you are unwilling to do what it is that you need to do. So you cannot be stagnant and expect blessings from God. Blessings require us to do our part 
which in turn allows God to do his part. Remember, Kava means to bind together with God, right? It means that word in and of itself means to have an understanding of what God expects you to be doing during your wait time. Um, your wait time is really a time of preparation and understanding. Um, when I think back to moving from being an administ excuse me, moving from being a teacher to becoming an administrator. Uh, Bishop and I talk about this story all the time. Uh, Bishop had a, uh, I guess that was going to come on a Wednesday night to talk about education. And as a teacher, it was a guest that I was not super fond of. And when I got the text message um, that Bishop said, you know, I need you to meet this person outside. I need you to be responsible for her, getting her to my office. Um, and I remember getting the text message and looking at it like, you have got to be kidding me. But I knew in that moment, um, there was something in it that caused me to need to follow this. And so I went that day, um, um left all my feelings at the door, um, took the time to greet um, have conversation. Um, and from that moment, uh, my career took a shift. Um, I got into a leadership program and I've been an administrator ever since that day. And so it is again, understanding what you should be doing in that wait time. I already had a degree, a second degree, but I was still teaching um, I wasn't sure what the next steps are and how I was going to be able to move forward, but taking that time to listen and prepare and bind together with God changed the trajectory of where I am right now. So it is important that we not sit and wait for this idea of a hookup and the idea that these blessings are just going to drop from heaven regardless of what we are doing in our wait time. So then I realized, okay, like if, if that's the first understanding of wait time, then what is, what should we be doing so that we are preparing? So my second type of wait time would be our W is working anxiously and intentionally towards the transition, working anxiously and intentionally towards the transition. So the difference in, in this one is that we are, we are doing, we are doing, we are not, we are not just waiting around for, for this idea that God is like a magician in the moment and things are just going to magically appear because we wish them to appear or he's just throwing these things out there in hope that we are just going to catch them. So we've got to move from wasting away opportunity, avoiding preparation, ignoring the process during the transition. And we've got to move into working anxiously and intentionally towards the transition. Waiting on God requires time and patience, but time and patience does not transition into laziness and procrastination. Again, waiting on God requires time and patience, but time and patience does not have to translate into laziness and procrastination. We must bind together, wait, and do the required work 
of the Lord if we want to get to the transition that we were ultimately looking for. So oftentimes when I am um, looking for a word um, or dealing with the word or trying to work through what God has for me, I'm like, I'll go to the Bible and I'll look up everything, um, try to find every scripture that has the word in it. Now, you know, wait or waiting is found tons of times. And sometimes I can get too literal um, and then I get overwhelmed. Um, but I, as I culminate and, 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 and get to the end of this message, um, there was another scripture that came to me and I'm, I'm sorry, team. I don't think I gave you this scripture, but it's, it's John 15, five. And this was my thought about John 15, five. The scripture reads, I am the vine. You are the branches. The one who remains in me and I in him bears much fruit. For otherwise, apart from me, that is cut off from vital union with me, you can do nothing. And so I kept trying to figure out why is this, how is this scripture, excuse me, related to this idea of, of, of waiting and how are they connected? And then I went back to the idea that when we use the word wait again, when we look at the Hebrew word, Hebrew meaning of it, it says bind together, right? John 15, five says, I am the vine and you are the branches. So we cannot fully branch off of the vine of Christ without being bound together with him. And so if we're not doing what we need to do in the wait time so that we're able to understand what the requirements are for what comes next, then we are not fully branching off of the vine, which is Christ, which means We're not in vital union and we cannot do the things that we need to fully do on earth without making sure that we're working in the wait time, that we're binding together. And so we continue to be branches that are connected to the vine. So I hope that I um, gave you something to think about this morning. Um, I am a firm believer. Something comes to me because it's, because it's what I need to be working on in the moment. Um, I am also cognizant of time. And so I am going to make sure that... Um, I am following the directions that are given to me. So um, I'm going to pray us out and then I will turn it back over to um, Pastor Ray. Um, And so Father God, I thank you for this time. Um, I thank you for allowing me to be in front of your people today. Father, I hope that nothing I said was not in alignment with your word your will, and your way. And if there is anything that I have said this morning that is not aligned with that, I ask I ask that you remove it from the minds of your people. Father, again, I thank you. I love you. I appreciate you. And I do not um, take it lightly that you have brought me in front of your people this morning. Again, let me 